I'm Scott Simi. I'm in my laundry room, and this is the DJI Action Camera. Nicely done. And it looks dry. Very cool. All right, I got it out of the dryer. It was a little warm, but it wasn't in there that long and everything was cool. So you've guessed it. This is a review of the DJI Action Camera 2. It is a modular system and you can see there are sort of two parts here. There is the top, which is the sort of base camera proper. It's got a touch screen on the back that I'm looking at right now. And you can hopefully see it there once we get a focus lock. And coming back to the other side, it's attached at the moment to the touch screen module. Now the touch screen module allows you both to see yourself as you want to frame yourself for any sort of action vlogging and it also gives you access to resolution, frame rate, and other features, depending on what you've got it set to go at. And the two pieces simply come apart like that. Um, this is actually a very interesting little action camera. It's uh, a very obviously a very new kind of design. Uh, shoots 4K 120 frames per second, all the way down to 24 and everything in between. It's got hyperlapse, it's got time lapse, all the other good things that you come to expect with DJI products using the MIMO app. And you know what? It's actually pretty cool. So let's go outside and take a look. Okay, so I've got the action camera attached right now to a little magnetic ball joint holder, but you see this thing here? That is a magnetic lanyard. So I'm gonna pop the camera off, click it on this, and we'll go for a little walk. So here we go. Off it comes. Oh, hang on. There we go. Pull these clips apart. Off it comes. And hear that sound? So satisfying. Now, we manually rotated the video here inside the editing software because it did not auto rotate when we put the camera on the lanyard. Got to get my son to take the uh, garbage on organics bins in. Now, it's possible that I missed some sort of setting that would have made that happen, but we just thought we should let you know that we flipped it. So I figure this will give you a sense of the Rocksteady Stabilization 2.0, as well as the horizon leveling and the microphones that are built into the uh, module that is attached to the camera right now. The camera itself has a single microphone built into it, and the front-facing touchscreen module has three microphones built in. So when they snap together, you've got a total of four microphones for what DJI calls stereo matrix sound. Now, I'm noticing now as I'm editing, unless it's my imagination, but I seem to see a little bit of kind of flickering happening up in the trees with the light. Something doesn't look just quite right to me. All right, the weather kind of sucks, but the camera does have an IP68 rating, meaning that it's pretty much dustproof, waterproof up to 10 meters. I got the shades on, not because it's bright out, but hopefully so that you can see a reflection of the camera and the module in the glasses. Uh, the module that I've got on is a touchscreen OLED uh, screen, uh, very intuitive for moving your way around frame rates and resolutions. And of course, you can also use the MIMO app, uh, which DJI will be updating as they release this camera. Uh, so far, I'm pretty impressed, to, to be honest. It's a very unique design. Uh, the magnetic properties give you a lot of options for mounting. You could throw it on a shopping cart, on a skateboard truck, uh, pretty much anything that has iron in it. Uh, so a lot of options for mounting in unusual places without having to use like a Gorilla Joby or anything like that to, uh, to wrap it around. So kind of an interesting, interesting design and 4K 120 frames per second.
Whee! I mounted it on a swing. Just make sure that you've got enough iron in whatever you're going to mount it on. Watch. Good thing it's drop proof. I had much better luck mounting the camera to the actual pole of the structure. One of the cool accessories is that there is a click-on macro lens that attaches magnetically. This is exactly how it produced the image. We've got that sort of vignetting and letterboxing going on, uh, and it's not filling the screen, but it's still kind of a cool look for some cool shots. Now, despite the crummy weather, I did get out with just the single camera unit without a module, uh, mounted it on the dash and shot some hyperlapse, which I think turned out very, very smoothly. But if you look carefully, look at the line where the dash meets the windshield and you will see when we're not at a stoplight, but you will see that there is a very slight tilting effect that's going on. And I suspect what's happening there is that that is the horizon uh, steadying mode. Um, now, it doesn't really trouble me, but if it troubles you, you might want to consider that when you're uh, framing your shot, uh, that you wouldn't want a piece like that near the bottom or a horizontal section near the bottom of your frame. But it does indicate that the uh, horizon leveling is working. Perhaps that's in combination with rock steady. I'm not really certain what's causing that, but I do know that I noticed it uh, during a highway drive as well. The other thing I noticed is that when you're doing really processor intensive tasks like hyperlapse or time lapse, uh, this thing really sucks through the juice. Um, I think it's rated uh, for a runtime, camera only, DJI says 70 minutes, but the reality is uh, when you are doing a hyperlapse, uh, this thing really, really uses up a lot of juice. I didn't exactly time it, but I'm guessing it was around 20 minutes before, literally, just like the car, I had to fill up. All right, a little nicer day. This is at a park near my home. Um, it was quite gray out and very overcast, so the sky doesn't look very great. I was trying out here the digital zoom feature. It has a three times digital zoom, and like most digital zooms, it really starts to kind of break up and not look that great. So you'll probably want to avoid using the digital zoom, but hey, no one is going to twist your arm to make you do that. And I'm dropping this shot in here just because I think the color is really quite nice. Um, to me, this is what the color looked like that day. The trees, the grass, even, even the sky. Um, that's pretty much what it looked like on that day. And DJI does point out that uh, this particular camera does have what they call a newly implemented color temperature sensor which according to the news release, quote, helps the camera restore color tones in complex lighting conditions and underwater recording for more natural, vibrant results. And I wanted to leave you with a bit of blue sky. So this is just simply shooting in 4K mounted uh, inside the car, obviously. Um, and just kind of cruising along a country road on a lovely day with some blue sky and some clouds. Um, if you keep your eye out, you might notice that again, what I was describing earlier with the dash. Now, some of you might argue, hey, man, that's just like suspension. You're hitting bumps in the road, but really that's not what it is because what you have to recall here is that the camera is absolutely fixed to the dash the camera is not moving whatsoever. But you will see that the vents there do move. They tilt a little bit to the left and the right. And I do suspect that is the horizon leveling doing its thing, um, perhaps in conjunction with the rock steady stabilization. But I do think that's pretty nice looking video. And uh, 
you know it's been a it's been a blast trying this camera out i think it has a lot to offer in a in a very small package okay for the fpv pilots in the crowd the big question is is this thing going to be good on a drone I suspect it actually will be pretty good. You know, it weighs a couple of ounces, it's got the smaller form factor, and some people, I think, are, are really gonna wanna try this and, and hopefully it'll work out well on a drone. Uh, the downsides are that the battery life when you're flying just the single module, not so great when it's, uh, you know, recording and doing some processor intensive things. It's got pretty good runtime if it's just sitting there turned on. But I have certainly found that when doing a time lapse, when doing a hyperlapse, that the battery drains relatively quickly. Now, given that the average FPV flight might only be four to eight minutes, depending on what you're flying, maybe a little bit longer, um, maybe that's not an issue so much. I do think that this is going to really appeal to action vloggers, people who simply want something that they can literally just clip on. Uh, and, and just start shooting with, with no muss and no fuss. Uh, the user interface is great, it's really simple to use, and the image quality is really quite good. So, maybe it's for you, maybe it's not, but it's been a really interesting to test this out, and it's a very cool design from DJI. For DroneDJ.com, I'm Scott Simi. Beep.